Hi everyone, I'm Ben from Ben's Business Podcast and today I'm interviewing Jim Parker from the, the owner of property, uh, Five Properties, an estate agent and letting agent. So a brief dis- uh, introduction from myself to, about Jim is he's retired at 38, uh, at 38 years old. He's got, is it three you said? Three, three offices, offices. Yeah. Six virtual offices, well I've yeah. got more virtual offices and all the rest of it. But but ideally just three offices that's what you'll need three offices and around five yeah and these are uh, estate agents and letting agents he's been an accountant i think you still are an accountant today oh, i'm an accountant you always will be an accountant <laughs> manufacturing as well before and um, before that i used to be a financial controller financial director in the industry um with some of the local companies here um probably most prominent is esa mcintosh okay which is up at mitchelson which maybe is no longer because it was taken over by havelock and something else happened in between um, so ESA Mantos, Tillis Russell, uh, um, Forward Balfour and Leaving, um, you've got um, Alba Diagnostics and Glenorthus. I was with them as well at some point in time. Okay. Um, so I've been, you know, involved in a lot of the local companies, a lot of the local community as well. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I've seen watching you on social media and t- having discussions through social media, this is the first yeah. time we've met in person as well, is your your sort of video content, your your skill of publicity and marketing is really impressive and uh, yep. coming from a marketing background and seeing that it's it's really impressive and you're seeing five properties all over the place mm-hmm. also jim has over 20 years experience buying and selling properties so we can yep. pick your brain about what's going on in the property market right now and uh, what's a good investment and mm-hmm. uh, i'm i'm a property investor and i have a network of property investors good. so that's the sort of audience that We'll, we'll be watching as well as business owners and um, yeah that's my introduction of Jim so far would you like to tell us who Jim Parker is as well for no really. elaborate on that <laughs> no really <laughs> general dog's body for everybody I suppose um, geez, no, I just I do what I do and I'm who I am and I'm, I'm, I'm just like somebody once described me when I went for a psychometric test this is when you do for personnel um, it tells Russell actually, it was Angus Bell I actually sat me down and he said, look, you know, he says, Jim, when I was looking at psychometric test, you're a bit an open booker, you know, and I went, yeah, I'm actually, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes, for want of a better phrase, blurt it out and, uh, and sometimes it can't offend people, but it's authentic, it's me and mm-hmm. that's just how I do. And, and I'll attract the right people to me, I mean, we're going with the laws of attraction all the time, but I'll attract the right people to me, but I'm no... I don't want to be everything to everyone because then you'll be nothing to nobody, if that makes exactly. sense. Um, so I like to pin my colours to the mast. This is where I am with things. If you're coming along with me for the ride, great stuff. If you're no, I'm still enjoying myself. Good, yeah. So the first question I have was, yeah. um, what kind of, what is the goal and purpose of everything that you've been doing up to now oh, it's a big question but it's good it's good to hear like what's the um, motivation behind yeah. it all and what's what are you what's your life purpose what are you going for and in, in, in all of this that you're doing that's a huge question <laughs> yeah <to> start off <laughs> jeez it's like that's what like one piece uh, um I'll, I'll try and i'll try and bring it down your, your life purpose changes over a period of time i mean when i, when I first started probably when I started to have some sort of some sort of sense of what my purpose should be it was probably in my earlier 20s um, you know up to my 20s I had no idea what I was doing I had no direction I had nothing um, but it was from early 20s when I got introduced to people who were far more successful than me about you know and they says Jim you need to get involved in things like reading books listening to tapes that's a that's an old thing eh? tapes <laughs> now podcasts um uh, attending functions and uh, having a mentor an upline uh, mm-hmm. we'd actually look after it. so these four wheels on a car and they used to say to me if you don't have one of these then you're basically on a tricycle and if you don't have one of these you're on a bike and then if you don't you're on a unicycle and if you don't have any of that you've had it so you're better to have the four wheels in the car running all at the same time so in the pursuit of this over all the years i've constantly pursued um, that thought process of what is what, what do I want to achieve yeah. and I'll be honest um, you know for me I think now it's evolved to legacy it's, it's yeah. more it's more for my children now and for my, the wider community 
um, is what I want to achieve. Yeah. You know, I've achieved the things I want to achieve, really. You know, and I, I don't prescribe, for me personally, somebody else might want that. It's like things like, I don't want fast cars. I don't want fancy cars, anything like that. I don't want a big, massive house. I used to want things like that. But you get, you get, I think you get older as you go on and you, you're yeah. obviously quite young but as you go on when you get older you begin to realise that's not important anymore yeah. it tends to be it tends to be about the surrounding people around you in your community and the people you work with as well uh, and that's what that's what drives me forward now okay. that's the most important thing to me Yeah. I would say okay and how did you manage you've said on your your sort of bio your uh, profile that you managed to retire at 38, which is quite young for most people. And 38, yeah, well, that's a long story. Advice um, on how uh, how others can do the same, mm-hmm. just as quick or even quicker now with more experience. You can do it quicker because there's a lot more information out there. And, and, and when I first started, in property investment, when I first started, it was like the world waste. Yeah. And there was no coherent strategies from everyone. No one even got involved in property investment. Buy to let as a as a mortgage or a package or a word it never existed. There was no such term at that time, um, and it was only that was only to come five years later after I first started. And um, so all my business was done not with normal mainstream lenders. It was done through banks. Mm-hmm. It was all corporate lending, uh, yeah. and I had to convince the banks. So I took a lot of no's and a lot of rejection because most bank managers, when you approach them with this idea about starting a business, about getting involved in property investment, just used to laugh and say, like, computer says no. Um, is that sort of way, way yeah, to things. Right. Um, so that's how I first got started. Um, um, but it took, me about, it took me about four years to actually get to that stage. And that was all the learning process that happened before. The books, the tapes, upline function, the mentors, the, the, um, the um, podcast, well, the audios and stuff like that as well. It took me about four years to get to that stage, even to commit to buying my first property. Right. Because I never had that mindset. I wasn't of that. It, it's a classic example. Here it is. Here's where I was right now. This is what had happened to me and successive gener- previous generations before. Um, it's like when you're in a... It's like, it's like the fleas in the jar. We know a flea can jump three feet, 36 inches. Uh, but if you put a flea in a jar and put a lid on it, it starts to jump to hit its head and it's only five inches at a time because that's the, that's the length of the jar. You can put a six inch or 12 inch or whatever jar in and put the lid on. But the flea keeps hitting its head and after a period of time, the flea then begins to learn to itself that, yeah. that it's just going to miss the top of the jar. And if it misses the top of the jar, what will happen is it then doesn't bump its head. So then it goes, this is easy. I'm just going to keep jumping five inches. But then mummy and daddy flea have baby flea. Baby flea's born, but we all know baby flea can jump 36 inches. Mm -hmm. Um, But baby flea doesn't know that. Baby flea sees mummy and daddy flea jumping five inches. And that's all it ever knows. So baby flea thinks it can only jump five inches. And that's where my thinking was. I just saw everybody else around me only doing a certain amount and only being able to aspire to a certain level. Therefore, I had no idea there was anything above that. Um, and that's where I was mentally. So it took me four years to actually make that commitment um, over a period of time to get and say, okay, I'll buy my first property. But I tell you what, once I proved the model, yeah. <laughs> I just went, I'm buying, I'm buying, yeah. I'm buying. It was like going around a Monopoly board. Yeah. And I just started buying and buying. because it was all, easier back then. I got all the backers. I got all the backers behind me, the banks. Mm-hmm. I got the banks, convinced them. I convinced certain managers. I went through all this. Um, if, if, if it works well, would you get my corporate facility and funding? And then they went, yeah, that's fine. So they gave me a facility and that's when I started buying. It took me, probably from the start, the, the start of buying to, the, to the, when I retired at 38, it probably took me actually just eight years. Right. Um, which in anybody's mind was pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was a long time. Yeah. I was working. So you see the foundation you said that about the, the car wheels. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take to move from the, the first mindset the average mindset, let's call it, to a, a new mindset where you hit 30 and went went for it after that. It was a lot of conditioning. Yeah. It was a huge amount of conditioning. It was a huge amount of torment and a huge amount of anxiety, um, almost swings you know, up and down in terms of my moods and okay. stuff like that. It was very, very difficult um, and uh, because I was trying to break that programming. Right. Um, and, and 
it, it, it was it was actually because you know you you know yourself and if if you've all, if you always think how you've always thought you'll always get what you've always got it will never change for you yeah so if you want to change outside of that you have to think out further advanced than that in order to get better at what you do and be more progressive at what you do hence the reason why I had to adopt that mindset yeah um, so it was challenging in the beginning I mean you know there was times I actually sat in the corner and just rocked and back and forward right <laughs> <laughs> I've never told that story before yeah, but yeah, just yeah. sat there and rocked back and forward like I was a crazy person yeah because I just I, I couldn't take the anxiety right it was and just where, where so did difficult the, what, what was causing the anxiety at that thing because I was doing something I'd never done before right I was having to speak to people I was having to phone people I was having okay. to do everything I mean now it's natural you just phone people up yeah. and say this is the deal and this is what we're doing and all the rest yeah. of it but in the beginning I had never done anything like that right um, what drove me? The dream. Yeah. It was the, when the when the dream's big enough, the facts don't count. We all know that, and it's a great cliche. Mm-hmm. But what happens is, you, it's 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 what drives you to to do something more. I mean, I'll give you an example of this. If you've if you've got a burning building and your your phone's left in the burning building, very few people would run in for your phone because um, the, the 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 dream or the goal is not big enough yeah. to do that. Um, fair enough, if you've got your cart in the building, some people actually might go, I'm running in for my cart to save yeah. it. If you've got your kids in the building, you'll be in there like a flash. Yeah. So what's, cost. what's changed yeah. in that? Yeah, it's exactly. So you can either be, in this situation, you can either be pulled by your dreams mm-hmm. or you can be pushed by your circumstances. And for me, it was more pushed by my circumstances because I wanted to be successful at something. I wanted to excel at something. I didn't know what that was, but I had the faith that I was going to move forward by the conditioning that I had from the books and tapes and uplifting mm-hmm. mentors. Um, that's what drove me forward yeah. uh, to, to try and achieve what I want to achieve. I, I mean, it's a, it's a journey. It's not a destination, though. That's the thing. And it, won't, it, won't, it will always be a progression for me. Um, yeah. I, have, I have never arrived yet. I will never arrive and and I will continue, and I have complete faith that there's bigger things to come. Yeah, uh, that's the sort of mindset. Yeah, um, and and then I'd always give myself a goal that if I wasn't a millionaire before I retired, then I deserve everything I get because I never took a pension. Yeah, I deliberately didn't do that yeah, because yeah. I thought if I've no made a million by the time I <laughs> retire at sixty-five, yeah. I've, I, that's it. Yeah. It's the old thing about the Vikings used to appear on the shore. Right. And when they were going to fight someone, right? And what it was, a thousand Vikings would turn up long ships. Right. And then there would be about 10,000 people fighting them on the shore. Right. And what the captains of the Viking boats did was they said, burn the boats. Yeah. And they went, what? And they went, burn the boats. And he says, but there's only a thousand of us, there's 10,000 of them. Well, you're either going to, you're either going to win or you're going to die trying. Mm-hmm. And basically that's the, that's the mindset I had. And I've always had that sort yeah. of mindset and it's yeah. always followed me and it's always stayed with me and I try to teach other people that as well yeah yeah commitment it is it's, it's all or nothing for me yeah you're either going to succeed or you're no yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no it, and, and it comes back to saying it's like well lift your arm mm-hmm. lift your arm right now right. <laughs> so did you try uh, you did it yeah 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 Aye. So you either do it or you don't. Aye, you don't just it. try to lift Aye. your arm. Yeah, you just yeah. like lift your arm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's it. Done. Yeah. And I see that there's live viewers. If you have any questions, we can answer them at the end if we've got time, hopefully. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I like that. It's I'm, I have the same mindset when it Good. comes to. I noticed that anyway. Commitment. Yeah. Uh, that's all or nothing, mm-hmm. and I think that leads to better results rather than a half-hearted approach to something where you can. Go back on the boat. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of answered the next question I had. Ask it again, just in case. Okay. Because there'll be other things probably to add on to that. Okay. Possibly. To you, you mentioned about the part about getting involved in buy to let before mm-hmm. buy to let as a phrase kind of existed. Yeah. Okay. What year was that then? What what year and then? <sighs> I think that was 1993 or thereabouts. Okay. So you're talking about 93, 95, yeah. um, if, I, if, I was, if I was guessing. Uh, that's the round of it where I got yeah. involved in Buy to Let. Right. Buy to Let Mortgage never appeared till early 2000s, I think. All right. Okay. Or thereabouts. Right. Um, uh, and when I was involved in Buy to Let when we first got, began, there was no legislation, there was nothing. Yeah. There was the Housing Act in 1988, fair enough. Um, and, and that's fine, and that was in place. 
But there was no legislation really for anybody to follow. So it was like, well, what are you meant to be doing? I, it was just putting your own your own thing on how you would set up a tenancy, what you would do. You had short issue tenancy agreements, um, but they weren't really cast iron and they weren't, didn't give anybody really any real protection um, on both sides for the tenant and for the landlord. Right. Um, and it was never really enforced and there was never really any legislation in place or, or what it is today. Right. Um, so I remember that, and that's why I always say it was like the Wild West sometimes. Right. You know, and what, what was the benefit and what was the, the cons of that as well? I think there's always been a benefit. Right. Yeah. I think, I, think um, I, 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 I know a lot of landlords and property investors won't agree with this, but I actually wholly believe in the legislation process. Yeah, okay. And I think the legislation process is the way forward because some of the landlords will just not agree with it. Right. And there will be no repercussions because of that. But the but a lot of landlords. What I would say is a lot of landlords don't know what they don't know, and it's a, it's unfortunate because most landlords are a cottage. We're a cottage industry. Whether we're like I know, I mean, you know, you get landlords so you'd say, oh, we're a professional outfit. Well, no, really, we're a cottage industry, really, because most landlords or private or property investors have one or two properties. They don't have a huge amount of properties, and the one or two properties are only really for them to actually possibly have a a, a top up income for when they retire. Uh, some to help them out now when they're going along with what they're doing and then also maybe a bit of capital to have aside because they don't have no they never plan for a pension right. i mean when i was you know when i was younger no pension yeah. what what's a pension right, why okay. do you really need that yeah um i mean maybe my dad always said it to me but he never said it really you got to right but i, I say to every single person now uh, you should be starting pensions for your children children right now you can do private pensions for your children right now you don't need to wait till 18 or when they're working you can actually do private pensions for them now put a small amount in and the government will top it up with the tax up to the basic rate of tax um, and they do that for your children the compounded effect of that is absolutely astronomical it's, yeah. it's huge over yeah. over the years the and, earlier and, you start yeah the and your well, children yeah. will never need to be in a position where they'll never need to they'll never need to have to work till they die yeah because that's effectively what's going to happen mm -hmm. this this country and the whole world has not got enough money to look after people are living longer now yeah and um, so we'll have to put aside for ourselves and we have to put aside for successive generations as mm -hmm. well yeah. and it's and for me personally i think it's my duty to do that for my family and for my for everybody that comes after that and yeah. um, i don't mean put all the burden on yourself i just mean i think it's i should have I should do that and yeah. just not leave them to fend for themselves. Yeah. After all, I was the one that made them, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. So yeah. I just feel duty bound to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, so you've been involved in property for over 20 years, maybe more now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you've been buying and selling properties for t uh, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice or observation and lesson that you can share to property investors today? Geez, property investors, best advice is uh, property investment at its heart is really just a numbers game. Mm -hmm. If the numbers work every single time, then it makes absolute sense. Now, that doesn't negate the fact that you're dealing with people and that is important, but the core principle of the investment is numbers. That's what it comes, that's what it is. Um, once you get the numbers right, then you can move on from there. Mm -hmm. And if you get the numbers right, then you'll have money to continually to reinvest to make sure the person or the tenant that's in your property is actually adequately looked after. Someone actually castigated me the other day for saying that I should increase the rents by £5 a month. And I'm like, that's 60 quid a year. But if you've got 10 properties, that could be 600 a year. Yeah. But then if somebody's boiler goes down, you know, in a couple of years, then at least you've got £1,200 put aside to replace that boiler. Yeah. If you're not doing things like that, then you're, you're leaving yourself open to the fact that you, some landlords, and we've seen it, I've seen it before, where they've not got enough money to actually provide for their tenant. And then it puts them in a vulnerable situation. Um, you've got a duty of care. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's the whole point. Yeah. Um, so that's why, that's the best advice I can give to people is charge the right amount, make sure the numbers are right, but you make sure the numbers are right in order to make sure you are covered for things like that. I've, right. I've, 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 as soon as somebody says as long as I can just cover the mortgage I'm like you shouldn't be in property investment yeah. because that you'll never have any money to put back into yeah. look after the tenant if anything goes wrong yeah. so do you think the fact you did accountancy for so long before you got into property really contributed to 
I did. A did, but did. but I'm wired for numbers. Okay. I'm wired like that. I mean, you know, I I I I, I mean, I never got on well at school when I was asked to leave and all the rest of it. But I knew I excelled in school at, at arithmetic and okay. mathematics. Right. Um. So numbers was all my always my yeah. thing. And then when later on, when I had this period of transition between leaving school to start in college, um, when I had that period of transition, um, I kind of lost that that thing. And then when I got to college, it was like whoa. This was a whole different ball game. I had a different mindset at that point in time, right. and I started to excel again right. in areas like statistical analysis and, right. and business studies and accountancy, yeah. and and then went on from there. Yeah. Um, so I, I, yeah, it definitely, it definitely did a did a good amount. Um, you've got to know your numbers. Yeah. If you don't know your numbers, how do you know where you're going? Yeah. That's almost just like a ship leaving mm -hmm. um, the the port. And then saying, I, I tell you what, we're going to try and get to Africa and we'll just see how we get on. But we're not going to actually, we're not going to work out how we're going to get there. We're just going to try for the best. We think it's maybe north and we'll just keep plodding along that way. Well, if you're one degree off in that calculation, you're going to end up at the, maybe in, in the top of Africa rather than the bottom yeah, of Africa. Yeah. Um, just because you're one degree off. Aye. And But that, see how the compounder effect comes? Exactly. Just yeah. with that small amount, that small difference will, will, will lead you in a totally different track. Yeah. And that's like most things will happen in people's lives. They don't yeah. plan... Drifting in the wrong well, direction. Yeah. Honestly, people will spend more time planning their next holiday than it is their financial future. Yeah. Uh, and people, some people just like kick it into the long grass and think, I'll oh, just no think about it ever yeah. again. Because I don't, I don't want to bear the thought about where <laughs> I am because I, just, I know it's going to be frightening. Yeah. But if, if you come to that conclusion... We've got something to work with yeah. in order to help you move forward mm -hmm. so you know where you are. If you know where you are, you know where you're going. If you don't know where you are right now, yeah. you certainly don't know where you're going that's, next. Yeah, that's brilliant advice. That's very good advice because uh, I've found myself sort of not being exactly on the on the point where I should be yeah. until you actually look at the bank account, like the accounts, the, the numbers. When you take your eye off the numbers, that's when you just you end up off track. I do it every so, day. Yeah. Uh, and it's no further looking at the money. It's just looking at the numbers. Yeah. So you know where I, you are. I, I know if the cash flow is right, I know the profits. Yeah. yeah. I don't look at the other way. I mean, you could have loads of profit, but you could have no cash. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of businesses go to bust, making mm -hmm. huge amounts of profit, but they've got no cash. Yeah. Because I always say there's a there's a rule, because I used to be in accountancy about credit control. Mm -hmm. So I used to collect money from all the big companies like Amy and Muir Construction that I, when I was with Marktosh for construction. And I used to never had a saying, and I, I I put it in a frame and I put it on the wall. There is no profit until the money's in the bank. I agree with that. I see a sim similar idea that the sales not made until the money's yeah. in the bank as well. Very, That's it. Very and close to that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. On that as well, I think an important point for anyone who hasn't got the gift of numbers. Mm -hmm. What would what would you recommend to them? basic courses you yeah. can get basic courses i mean business gateway run courses for nothing mm. um uh, you know just maybe a, an afternoon session and they'll, they'll do it or, or they'll run it for like 30 pound or something like that yeah just to understand your basic numbers if you understand your profit and loss account and you understand the balance sheet that's the two core fundamentals so the profit and loss account is a snapshot of how well you've done for the year uh, the balance sheet is a snapshot of where you are at that point in time in the year. Um, that's where these two statements are. The cash flow statement is a classic example as well. The cash flow statement goes a long line that. The cash flow statement shows how healthy your, your, um, your ability to keep going is as well and where your money goes. Because as I said, you can be very profitable but running out of cash. Because yeah. um, all your money is either tied up in stock because you bought all the stock with the money, mm -hmm. um, or it's all tied up, ready to be paid, still yeah. by the people you've done work for, but you've actually given them credit. Yeah. So all your money could be tied up in that as well. Yeah. So um, so cash is king. Yeah. No, sorry, cash is trash. <laughs> <laughs> cash flow is king yeah exactly <laughs> the bit of paper you have in your hand isn't it worth anything it's a promissory note but cash flow is what is the lifeblood of every business yeah profitable as well like yeah. you're saying it's staying being in profit and knowing the outgoings as well as the, the income absolutely coming in. as I say I keep it an eye on it most of the time I've got a, a 
I've got two part-time people that work in the accounts division as well, and they help me. I mean, Elaine's, uh, Elaine, um, uh, my bookkeeper, has helped me since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Since I first started in Buy to Let, she was helping me right. all the time. So she's worked with me for all these years. Yeah. Um, and my daughter, Tony, she's an accountant as well, and uh, and she helps me part-time as well, as well as doing her full-time yeah. job. And you say you, s you have a look at the numbers every day. What, what numbers do you look at? Just key indicators for me to make sure everything's right. It's, uh, it's, uh, I've, got, I've got this fear that I'm going to run out of money. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I know that's never going to happen. Yeah. It's like, but it, it, it's, you just have, um, I don't know, you just have that sort of thing. It's like, oh, I could run out of money. But that's never going to happen. That's impossible. Right. Um, for where I'm right now, it's like yeah. no, that will never ever happen. Yeah. Um, but you, 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 you know, have you ever heard the imposter syndrome? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like how many of am I? How many of them are here? And people might find out that I'm, I'm, I'm possibly no successful or whatever. Right. But I am. Yeah. Um, in their minds, I am. But for me, it's just me. It's just what I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I it's know, just what yeah. I do. It's just what I do day to day. Right. Everybody keeps saying. I get a lot of people saying, "God, you could sell sand to the Arabs. You can sell snow to the Eskimos." And I'm like, I just do what I do. It's just me. Yeah. It's it's just natural. Yeah. And that's when it comes back to one of the rules that I have is just be authentic. Yeah. Be you. Mm -hmm. And you'll attract the people that, are, that are work with you. Because the last thing you want to do is be someone else. And then you'll attract the people that are like that. But you won't align with them because your beliefs will be completely different. And yeah. therefore, you won't actually be able to work with them because of that reason. Yeah. And so don't be someone else. Be you mm -hmm. and attract the right people to yeah. you. And that helps you with sales, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not going to win them all. But yeah. I've, never, I've never planned to win them all anyway. Mm -hmm. I just want to work with the people I want to work yeah. with, the people that align with me and the people that think like me. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense because then you attract the wrong person if, yeah. you're, if you're not being yourself. If you were looking to invest in a property, mm -hmm. viewing it for the first time, what do you look for when you're walking through the property? I, and, look at, I don't look at them anymore. You don't look at them, right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually get Richard to go around. Okay. So if I'm if I'm gonna Richard's my lens director, or I'll get Kern Kern's or one of our lens agents as well. Um, I I don't really go to property okay. anymore. It's very rare, but I'll always make an offer on a property before I go to see it. Okay. I have no desire to go and view a property only for them to say that's no enough when I offer. Okay. That's a waste of my time. So yeah. in order to make me time efficient, what I've learned is I make an offer based on my numbers. Mm -hmm. If they're in at that value then I'll go and view it yeah. and then I'll then if it's what I expected then that's fine we've got a okay. deal we're, so we're you job make, done you do the numbers you make the offer and then once the deal is going ahead you go and view it yeah because if, yeah. if you've got 100 properties you're looking at right yeah I'll bet you yeah, probably about 95 of them will mm -hmm. actually not work for you when yeah. you're scrolling through them so when you're scrolling through five of them might work for you you make five offers um, you see where it is. Some people, most people, will come back and say, "No, that's we're not in it." That some people will actually go, "That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, we're up for it." I've got a weak part. I always attract. I always attract. I always attract animals. It's just me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you can see so you you you'll, you'll be in at the right number, but you'll not get you'll not get the you'll not always get them all. So you look at a hundred, you'll maybe get two. Yeah. If if you're lucky. Yeah. Is that a ratio that you've? Sort of got really I never worked it out, but okay. I know I know the rule of thumb. So that, that, that's yeah. kind of where okay. you are. Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna get everything all the time. But when I'm saying look at a hundred, I'm not saying you go around and look at a hundred properties. Yeah. I'm saying you just go through the internet and you're just scrolling all the lists. Yeah. And it's like you. I know my numbers. I know what I want and where I am. So I could look at a property straight away and go. I know what I should be paying for that. Yeah. Um, and often, you know, I'm quite happy most occasions if, if the numbers work, I'll just pay home report or I'll pay over home report. Okay. If the numbers work, I'll pay it. Okay. It's like, because numbers work, what are you bored about? Yeah. It's long term investing you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're not doing, I'll make a quick buck. You're doing, this is long term investing. My numbers work entirely at that level. So why would I not pay them the right price yeah. for their property? And then we'll move, then, then we're both. It's a win win situation. Yeah. When you say long term, are you talking about the capital gains? As well as the cash flow. I'm talking about everything. Yeah. I, I've got, I've got, this will be passed on to my family. Yeah. This will be passed on to my children. Yeah. I, I've got no intention. It's, uh, this is never for, I, I know it sounds dark, but this is never really for me. It's, uh, it gives me the, it gives me the, it gives me the comfort 
that I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. Yeah. I could stop working tomorrow, sit on a beach for the rest of my yeah. life and still earn money. Yeah. Um, and my wealth will still go up as a result, but, mm. but it's, the, it's the comfort of that. Yeah. Um, so I'll continue to work all the time because yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, but I just love the comfort that I could actually get away from that. Mm. Um, the one thing that I couldn't stand in my job, uh, I loved my job and I loved manufacturing, but the one thing it was too much for me was I had to be there all the time, every time. And I had no, I had no, I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. I was restricted. And and I, I did do that in the beginning. I did do a lot of stuff outside hours. So yeah. I, I used to come home straight away, put my overalls on and just go out to work on my properties. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to do that weekends as well. Yeah. And everybody used to laugh at me going, there's Jim the cleaner, walking past them while cleaning stuff and right. all the rest of it while they're all having their barbecues out the back garden. But they're still staying in the same house that they've got and I'm in an entirely different house and financially free. Yeah fundamental difference I paid a price earlier mm. you're, uh, this is a way key for you you're either going to pay the price for success now yeah. or you're going to pay it later yeah. but I tell you what the invoice for regret later on is a lot bigger yeah. um, and I certainly didn't want to pay that and I don't want my family to pay it either because yeah. your kids will end up paying it as well because yeah. you'll have nothing to pass on to them yeah. um, and you'll not have taught them anything mm -hmm. the great thing of doing what I've done for me personally what I think yeah. is my children have actually seen me doing that and that's like the jar it's that's like living in the jar so they've, they've seen me I've got I have no jar yeah. I know I can reach any height I ever want to reach yeah. I'm convinced of that in my own mind and they actually know that as well and they know they can do that as well yeah plus you have the time to spend with them as well yeah a lot of people actually used to say to me you've sacrificed all that time and you've never seen your children well that's not the case because I always made sure I was there for things like sports days for yeah, my children. Yeah. I always turned up, I always took time off. Mm -hmm. I had great bosses yeah. who actually used to trade time with me. Mm -hmm. So I used to trade holidays for times. So I said to them, I'll tell you what I'll do. Can I just go to my kids' sports day? It's only going to be two hours. Mm -hmm. And then what I'll do, and then can I go and view this house? It's only going to be two hours. And then I just saved up all these two hours I was doing. Yeah. And then I said, can I, I'll just trade that for a day's holiday. Yeah. So I, I used that over it, and they were great that way. But right. I taught them to invest as well. Yeah. So what I did was I taught them to invest as well, and then the reciprocal agreement for me is they gave me huge flexibility in what I wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. So they allowed me out, and then I just said, there you go. So I never got anything for nothing off them. I just got a lot of leeway from them because yeah. I taught them how to do what I did. Right. Uh, they made up. They made up fair amount of money as well yeah. um, some of them actually just sold up and went away eventually when 2006 came the, yeah. the height of the market and it was booming yeah. property prices were huge and they went oh, I can't I need to sell but for me personally I did sell some but then I, I was a great believer in you win the chop during the tree that bears the fruit Yeah. Um, so that's that's why I've still got what I've got right. because because it's literally a, 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 an asset class it actually goes up in value and pays you to wait while it goes up in value. Yeah. What other, <laughs> what other asset yeah. class does that? Mm. Doesn't, gold doesn't do that. Yeah. Silver doesn't do that. And crypto doesn't do that either. Crypto yeah. dropped like a stone. Yeah. I've recently heard there was an MMA fighter apparently lost 40 million. He lost <laughs> all his money. He made that right. year in, yeah. in MMA fighting or whatever that is. So to, Aye, 40 so, million. He, yeah. was in, he was in tears. They had yeah. him on camera and everything. Right. And I'm thinking, jeez, I, I mean, it's gambling. Mm. He, you know, people like Bill Gates and that sit there and ask him about crypto and they say to them, um, you know, what do you think? Have you, have you, and, and they're going, no, I just like something that produces something. Something that's there, it's cast iron that actually will actually produce something and will actually. Um, actually make money yeah um and and it's and and i'm and i prefer the i prefer the consistency mm -hmm. i prefer the consistency rather than the volatility yeah if that way. but a, but a lot of people you know i would imagine a lot of people when what would attract me to crypto is the thrill yeah of the investment but if you're going to invest in crypto be prepared to lose it all yeah that's what you do just if you're gonna mm -hmm. it's like a casino because you, you you're basically hedging everything on somebody else's perception that it's worth more to them because it's just it's software. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Um. That's there's nothing there's nothing tangible about it. Yeah. It's just based on what somebody else thinks is worth to them. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, it's probably worth a lot less than what yeah. it was six yeah. months ago. Yeah. No. There's there is merit. To obviously, the the internet and blockchain and things. There is there is potential there, and I've seen it with the internet myself. Like yeah. I was quite early, not early, but my dad was an early adopter of the internet and yeah. internet marketing, and I got. That's what that's where I make my passive income from. Mm. Not not so much from property, 
um, more more from the internet. Yeah. And so there is like I can see Bitcoin as uh, one of these areas I've not tapped into enough yeah. to to know enough about to talk about it. But it's good to have a, a finger in something. But like you're saying, not everything. Like yeah. the, M- M- <laughs> the fighter. <laughs> Crypto, NFT, blockchain, all the rest of it, it, there will be something that finds its way. But is everything like that when it's first um, almost pioneering? There's other, there's people that blaze the trail for this, but that the, the trailblazers usually cost them, it cost them a fortune to do it. And a lot of casualties will happen. It's like you'll maybe have a hundred and only one will succeed. Yeah. And it's actually finding out what that one is, it's what yeah. everybody's trying to do. Yeah. And they're taking they're taking massive risks. Yeah. Um, because we don't know really know enough about yeah. it and it's quite intangible Whereas at this with, point in time. With property it's historically gone up. It's cast down. And, and yeah. Well so it always goes up. It's a good bet, yeah. It's, it'll always go you know why it'll always go up? Because the banks have to sell you a mortgage. And and the, the need population. to go up in order yeah. to do that. Yeah. And the population's in, increasing, even though it's declining, more and more people are beginning to live separately anyway. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and admittedly, more and more people are, need, are wanting an investment in another second income stream. And that, you can't decry that, because remember, there's people out there that can't afford even to buy a house anyway. Yeah. And it's not can't afford to buy a house because they're out of their price range, it's because they don't have any money, they don't earn anything. Yeah. And, and the, the, the government in the 1980s sold off 69% of all the housing stock for social housing. 69% of all the housing stock in Britain was disappeared yeah. almost within two or three years yeah. and because they decided to sell it all to the people. Right. And that's fantastic and that was a great idea at that time. But they forgot to stick to continue to build new stock. Yeah. And this is the, this is the, that's it's the all coming home at roost now. Yeah. Um, and they're trying to point the finger at private landlords saying it's your fault, it's like you've got all these houses. Well, we've not. We've got less houses now than we did, yeah. we did maybe, maybe two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, we, um, in the 1950s, uh, private landlords were sitting by housing stock around about, or, or landlords were sitting by housing stock around about 55% in the 1950s. Now, private landlords have only got 18% in the UK housing market. In terms of where we're going and where the housing market's going, recently for the for the courier it's not out yet um, and I, I told them but well, there's not going to be any crash yeah um, in the housing market okay they'll, they'll, you know that is that happen. out now the article from the courier no it'll right? come out in, it'll come out probably in the next couple of weeks um, they're doing a big article about okay. the housing market so they'll do a quarterly update so they asked me to contribute towards it uh, but there'll, there'll not be a crash there'll be a plateau mm-hmm. um, basically because interest rates are still at a record low compared to 20 years ago um, I'm, I've been looking at the, the data today about that um, I mean and, and then the average interest rate 20 years ago was 7.5%. Average interest rate now is about 3.5% in terms of that. So it's completely different. Yeah. Um, multiplier as well, you know, average house price to average uh, average earnings. And Fife anyway, is about six or seven times. Right. And that's quite normal. Yeah. In the UK, it's about 11 times. Yeah. But in Fife, it's about six or seven times. Right. Because um, it's about 30,000 average salary. It's about 180,000 average price to buy a house. Yeah. Um, admittedly, this one's obviously more, but that's the average. Um, so that's about six times. Yeah. So that's normal for. So Fife is quite a resilient market. Yeah. Fife is actually quite undervalued still, um, I would say, in comparison yeah. to the rest of the UK. Mm. And, it's, and, and, and Fife actually is a good proposition for, for, for anybody coming to live here. Yeah. And what's, what's exacerbated the situation is the fact that lockdown's now proved, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you can actually work remotely. Yeah. Why would you want to live in Glasgow then? And, and mainstream merchant city. Yeah. 450,000 for a two bedroom flat. Mm-hmm. What could you buy for 450,000 in Fife? Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, you could buy a big blooming, a big five bedroom. Castle. Uh, you know, <laughs> basically by the sea. Yeah. You could buy something by the sea. I mean, they yeah. sell them at that level by yeah, the yeah. sea in East Nuke. Um, so when you look at all that and you think, well, why, why would I be staying there if I could work remotely? Um, and, or even, I could even, I could even afford to take the pressure off myself by having such a large mortgage because I can buy the same thing here for almost a fraction of the price. Yeah. Um, and then still work remotely yeah. and still have this lifestyle. Yeah. Um, it's pretty intense in cities. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's probably why Fife is a lot more. Yeah, a well, it's where I live here, you see the train stations at the back of the house. Perfect. It's straight to Edinburgh, straight to London. Yeah. So it makes so much sense. So you could pop it in the office like once every week. Yeah. If you really wanted to. Yeah. And it's it, the same as well, you know, the infrastructure improvements are going into Leavenmouth. I mean, they're putting the new train station in there for 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about a hundred million investment going in there. 
um, and all the infrastructure itself. Um, so again, that's going to bring that again up. So yeah, you know, and more and more people are beginning to realise it's like, well, I can just commute. Yeah. If I'm going to go anywhere, and I can just work remotely. Yeah. Um, more so, um, because of the crisis with petrol. Yeah. And fuel and yeah, that. Yeah. A lot of employers are now saying, yeah. could you just work from home? Yeah. And that will save you the money of having to travel every day. So that will take all the pressure off. Mm. So yeah. that's another thing that's possibly coming as well. Yeah. As we go further into the yeah. so-called energy crisis. Yeah. Don't watch the news, by the way. It's like, <laughs> it's like any morning, it's doom and gloom every yeah. single time. Yeah. Just pedal that every single day. Before to and after. Convince people. Lockdown. <laughs> yeah, convince people. It's always and if happy. it's not that, it'll be something else next. Yeah. It'll be something yeah, else yeah. next. It'll be something else yeah. next. Because negative news always yeah. sells. Just tune out from it. Read the uh, list of podcast. Listen yeah. to Ben's business podcast or Wealth Creation podcast. Wealth Creation show we we'll do at twelve thirty. Yeah. We're actually <laughs> going to be t- uh, 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 the top ten tips this this Monday um, yeah. for success. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be covering top ten tips for success. I actually brought some of them in my book here. Okay. Um, but we'll not talk about that then. Yeah, yeah. Um, well. We've got five minutes before oh, you. No, no, you're fine. Right, okay. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that on when on, on Monday. I'm going to actually get you on if you've got yeah, time. Ah, yeah, um, so yeah. we can talk about that on Monday. The top yeah. ten tips for um, for success. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, but my opinion is really driven by the all everybody else that's come before me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've not made this up. Yeah. This is all. This is all things like. I mean, you've got a huge book library there. Yeah. And I was looking at my yeah. library as well. <laughs> yeah, there and there, and and I've literally got a lot of these books as well and read a lot of them as well. Yeah. There's yeah. a huge amount, and I'll read uh, Tony Robbins. Money is a fantastic book. Money, money. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, and then you've got also the, the the Bible of wealth creation, which is Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. I mean, what a great principle! Think and grow rich. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean to say it's rich in money. That just means to say it's rich in success. Richness. Yeah. And round about you and everything you're involved in. Yeah. You'll be rich in your career. You'll be rich in your family itself. You'll be rich in, rich in your social circle, your interaction with people in your community as well. That's what Think and Grow Rich is all yeah, about. Yeah. It's not all about money all the time. Mind you, money's right up there with oxygen. Yeah. You obviously need it. Aye. You need it to survive. You need it for everything. Anybody that says that's no, yeah. no you know, kidding themselves yeah, because yeah. we've got a cost of living crisis and what is the first thing everybody talks about? Money. Yeah. And the lack yeah. of it more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and you can... And, and I say we shouldn't be focusing on the lack of money we should be working out how to attract that money to us yeah. um, that money is already there in the, in the circulation the money is already there yeah. somebody else has got it or it's somewhere else or it's in the circulation what we're trying to do or what you want to be trying to do is try to attract that money towards you so you can earn that money yeah. so you can be more successful more prosperous as a result yeah. and therefore help you and your community as yeah. well Yeah, and like thinking rich is about thinking is about the mind the mind thinks and yeah it's just what what's going on in that mind that actually does the attraction of the of the Absolutely. wealth. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's a really good point as well. And what's what would you say apart from Think and Grow Rich? What's your favourite book? Oh. That's been the most impactful. The towards? um oh the Virgin Way. The Richard Virgin, Branson. Richard and I. Branson. Yeah. The okay. Virgin Way. Richard Branson is a fantastic book. Um, it is really a masterclass in customer service mm. and how you should look after people. And, and, and is that a newer one or is it an older one? Uh, no, the the version way by Richard Branson. Yeah, I, I, he's got quite a few. Oh, you? oh, I've read them all. All oh, right, okay. Or every single book he writes, so I, I've screw read it, them. Screw it, let's. Yeah, screw, screw it, let's do it. it. So, no, yeah. so the version way came later on, okay. and I actually got every single person in my company to read it. Right. And we all actually had a book club at that time, so right. we formed a book club. We were all reading the version way, and then we went on to think and grow rich, and then we went on to feel the fear and do it anyway, and then we went on to another book, and we'd okay. actually concentrate on all these different things to help us work through all these different mindsets yeah. to understand ourselves. And actually, be more, more, um, more forward thinking, and also more, um, uh, I would say, more confident in what we do. Mm-hmm. So, because you know, we're all, we're all, we're all born, right? But so, what determines us? What determines our future? Yeah. Because we're all born. That's it. We've got, you know, mo- most people have two, two arms, two legs, two yeah. eyes, two yeah. ears, all the rest of it. So, what determines how we end up? It is our background to a degree, but it's also up here. Yeah. And it's if you master the six inches you've got up here between yeah. your ears, yeah. Uh, then then you're made. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll be with you forever. Yeah. But the key is to make sure you pass that on to other people. So that's what it is. Yeah. My next project is MCR Pathways. 
So I'm working with MCR Pathways and they work with children in care. Okay. And they, I'll be a mentor for a child in care. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is I'll visit them once a week for an hour. I'll sit down with them and have a wee discussion with them and see where they are. Not like this or anything yeah, yeah. like that. But just listen to them. And what MCR Pathways has proved with children in care is they're about 35% if they don't have a mentor. The 35% if they don't have a mentor, they'll be unlikely to actually go into anything else. So in other words, 65% of the times they'll fall by the wayside, they'll be in jail or something like that, right. they'll fall into crime. And when they'll you say children education. in care, what, what, what do you mean in care? Well, in care, they've had to, the state's had to look after them. They've, right. social, right. they've okay. got a social okay. worker and all the rest of it, so that's children yeah. in care. Okay. So children in care, 35% if they're left just with no mentor. Mm -hmm. If they have a mentor throughout, their, throughout the years yeah. to help them guide them, as a, um, uh, what happens is that goes from 35% to about eight to percent. Yeah, That's a I heard huge something difference. similar about uh, a person's vocabulary as yeah. well. They end up in like if someone improves their vocabulary versus who, someone who doesn't have a good vocabulary. Yeah. there was a stat that showed that people with a lack of vocabulary ended up in jail or like in trouble. Like it's the same idea. That that, that is possibly the case. Um, one of the things I also advocate every single time is read books. Yeah, read books. It's not necessarily. It's not necessarily, it, it helps you with diction, it helps you with everything else, it helps you with your grammar, but it also helps you articulate to other people and communicate with other people. Yeah. It also teaches, there's a lot of books out there, I just read books that give me valuable life lessons. Yeah. Jordan Peterson is one I'm reading just now, The Twelve Rules, um, and, and it's about chaos and how it all comes about and how to change it all. Yeah. Um, but I'm intrigued now because this guy's got my attention. And it's like, okay, so, you know, where does that come from? So I'm learning from people. I might not take it all on board, mm -hmm. but I will take some good things out of there about what to, what potentially I could do or what, what I wouldn't do yeah. um, as a result. And that's why I read books like that. Um, there's lessons to be learned in everybody, whether it's good or bad, and you know yourself what aligns with you, therefore yeah. you know what you should do and what you shouldn't do yeah. as a yeah. result of that book. So you could read one of the worst books in the world, which I could... Right there. <laughs> I oh yeah! I didn't like him now. Trump. Don't, don't mention I, it. I, I, I didn't like him now. I, I, I used to. I used to have a lot of respect for him, but I don't anymore. Um, but but it, there is a lot of lessons you can learn out of that. Yeah. Um, because of what he's done and what yeah. he's yeah, achieved. Yeah, that's it. You but can, also yeah. because of what he's done and what he's achieved. Yeah. So you can learn both sides of that. Yeah. And again, it comes back to what you align with. Yeah. Um, that's it. Reading for me is about like. You can read someone's life story, an uh, evil person or an uh, an uh, uh, unsuccessful person versus a successful, um, uh, what would you call it, a saint. Yeah. And you can get a lesson just as powerful from the evil person learning from their mistake as well. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. It's yeah, history is a great opportunity to learn mm -hmm. from, uh, yeah. and we could see that now because now people we thought were highly successful and put them on pedestals and they're like wait a minute this has changed now because yeah. we're now thinking differently and everybody's thinking differently now and maybe they weren't these people we thought they were in the first place based on what circumstances are now mm -hmm. but at that time the circumstances were completely different yeah. and were adaptive to that point in time and that's why that happened but now it's not appropriate to be like that anymore and therefore we've learned a lesson about what it's not we shouldn't yeah. be now yeah. whereas uh, some people are actually still thinking well we should maybe just stick with that and probably Putin's one of them right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we should maybe just stick with that idea and think that's the right no that's not the right idea yeah. to do um, but who am I to tell him if he's watching don't do it <laughs> um, let's, see what, what's the, let's see any questions that come up Any questions, just post them in the comments. I can't see anything at the moment. Yeah, it's fine. Um, if there's anything we'll catch up later on, yeah, we'll maybe yeah, answer yeah. the questions. Um, yeah. Just catch them up for there. Aye. But but that's, that, you know, that's I think that's all I say. Um, do you want to round off with something? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Biggest mistake. I noticed that there. Ah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking about time. Uh, yeah, well, what about biggest mistake and biggest struggles? Like, what would what would you say they were? Every mistake I've made is for a reason, and it's brought me to where I am. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever made a mistake because I think it was meant to be. Yeah. Because I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. Yeah. Uh, and it's and I've learned by it, and it's actually allowed me to progress on. Yeah. The and and I, yeah, absolutely, I learned by it. Um, 
my the things the struggle for me uh, again comes back to psychological right. um, but everybody will go through that because we're not all that same way of thinking and we're yeah. not all that mindset yeah. as I said before and I'll finish off with this is if you want to be successful like someone else you have to think like them mm -hmm. you have to get into their mind you have to think how they think in order to be there or you would be there already yeah so that's how I would say about learning from other people. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, I used to be very cynical about this. I used to say, you know, how, how to make a million? Well, you write a book and you sell it to everybody and you make a million. You're maybe not a millionaire before you start, but yeah. then you just make it up in a book and you yeah. sell that something. The next minute you're a millionaire. And I used to be quite cynical about that, but I do check out people's backgrounds first before I, before I go to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And probably that's one of the, that's one of the biggest lessons of one of the biggest mistakes and one of the struggles I've had and right, the lessons okay. I learned is probably to actually actually look at someone else and, and check them out before I actually believe them. Yeah. Or before I actually I call it drink their Kool Aid. Yeah. Before you drink their Kool Aid, make sure they're the right person. Yeah. And uh, make okay. sure they are who they are and they walk the walk and they talk the talk. Yeah. And uh, and you align with them more importantly, that's where they're out with. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah, it's been a we'll pleasure. We'll probably have you on the Monday. Yes. We'll have you on the Monday Aye. show. Too. There, 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 there you go, there. you've got a commitment <laughs> straight away. <laughs> cool. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Cheers.